Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Uh, I have a video here that I'm creating. There was a question by a user in regards to curtain walls and swapping out panels for different things such as doors or insulation. So I'm in Revit 2018.2. I'm using the architectural uh, template, standard one. Head over to the wall command, start the command. Head over to the type selector, scroll down, and look for one to work with. Storefront works pretty well and just draw one. Once you've drawn it, head over to a elevation view, an elevation view that you can see. You can switch your mode to uh, shaded so you can see it a little easier. Now, when you select the entire curtain wall storefront that you're working with, if you go to the type properties, you'll see in this window what panel is being used and it says system panel glazed. Over here, what this means is that it uses all of them are going to be the system panel glazed. So if you need this to be something else, you can click inside here and switch it. You can switch it to a solid panel and hit apply, and they'll all change. Or you can switch it to any other system family. If you take a look, you'll see a whole bunch of walls. So the first request was, how do I switch it so that they are curtain wall doors? What you'll want to do is you'll want to load in those curtain wall doors. You can go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, go to Load Family, head over to the library, and in my case it's US Imperial, head over to Doors, and if you switch your view to Thumbnails, you can see what they look like. And there's curtain wall door here, here's another one, and here's another one. But you can grab all three and load them so that they get loaded. Once they are loaded, you can then tab into a panel, and so I'm going to zoom down here and put my mouse over the edge and hit tab until it highlights the panel that I want. That panel is selected. I can unpin it. Once it's unpinned, then I can go to the type selector and pick the curtain wall that I want. For example, this one. And it gets swapped out. Um, now, this error that I'm getting is because in my particular project and my particular software, there's a precast feature that's turned on by default. If I turn that off, I won't have that error. So I'll hit tab to select this mullion that I have down here and I'll unpin it and then I'll delete it since I don't need it. And you'll see that the curtain wall doors, since they are panel doors, they adjust to the size of the panel. And for a storefront wall, everything is pinned down. So if I want to adjust the size of this door to make it larger, if I tab into the grid line right here, as long as I unpin it and then set the dimension to what I want, everything will shift and everything will move accordingly. So this is how you swap out a panel for a curtain wall door. It could be a single door or a double curtain wall door. I also had a request in the same vein about what if you won't, don't want it to be a door, maybe you want it to be insulation. So again, if I head over to selecting it, the storefront door and go to the type properties, you can see over here it says the different curtain panel types to work with it'll accept walls, you see? So you can either create your own custom curtain wall panel or create a wall that acts as insulation. So I'm gonna do it both ways. So let's do the first one. I'll tab into this panel. Once it's selected, I'll unpin it. And right now it says solid, so all I have to do is go to the type properties of it and duplicate it and call it whatever I want. I'm gonna call it insulation method one and hit OK. Once I've done that, I can go over here under Materials and change it to anything that I want. Just click inside here and let the Material dialog box pop up. Type in Insulation in the search field and see if we have any insulation that's currently in the project or in the library. So let's just pretend it's rigid insulation. I can select it, hit OK, and then give it a thickness. So maybe the thickness of the insulation is only going to be uh, 1.75 inches thick and hit OK. Now that I've done that, I've actually created a new ins system panel called Insulation Method 1. And if I go to look at this in 3D, you'll see that it looks like so. If I hit Shaded, you can see it. And it looks slightly different in the shading color. And that's just because of how the material assignment is set up. If I switch this to Realistic, it may look even uh, more different, as you can see here. So if you need to really highlight and customize how that panel um, insulation material looks, just head back to the Manage tab of the ribbon and go to Materials. 
go to insulation because you have that rigid insulation here. The graphics tab displays how it looks in shaded or consistent color. So I can switch this to say, let's make it a funky orange color. And let's make the surface pattern, say this aluminum, just for the fun of it. And then the appearance tab says, what does it look like when uh, an image or a JPEG or a PNG file is physically applied to the model? So I can go in here right now, it's defined and set up as wall paint, which is a bit strange. So we can go in here and pick any other color that we want, say this uh, light uh, cyan color. And we can make it you know, glossy, eggshell, whatever we want. And that's because this one's set up from a uh, rigid insulation. If you need full control and switch this and this from, from wall paint to something else, you would want to start with the default material and then highly customize what you want. When it's all said and done, hit OK. And then you'll see it change accordingly. <clears throat> if I switch this back to shaded, you'll see how it looks in shaded mode. So that's the first method of taking a panel and switching it to insulation. Another method is to create a wall type that acts as insulation. So head over to the architecture tab, start the wall command, go to the type selector and look at all the walls that you have to work with. I'm gonna work with say generic five inches. And then I'll go to the type properties and I'll duplicate it. And this time I'll call it insulation method two. Hit OK. Go into the structure of the wall assembly and click inside here and again make it whatever you want. I'm going to call it. This time I'm going to go and type in default and see if it pops up. And so here's default and I'm going to right click and duplicate that. And then I'm going to rename that uh, insulation method 2. <clears throat> Now that I've done that, I can go back and delete that. So I can get the entire list and type in insulation again. So it pulls up on the list, select it. And then again, I can go in here and make any changes. So let's make this a different color, say red. And we'll make the pattern just so it's easier to see, say this concrete color. And the appearance tab, we can go in here and make it any color that we want. Make it say blue. And then there's no image tied to it because it's a default material. So you can actually apply any material that you want to it. So let's head over to um, the web. Let's go to Google Images. And let's just type in insulation pattern. And it looks like this. It's kind of weird because everybody thinks insulation is, you know, kind of like bad insulation for the walls. But I'm just looking for some kind of texture just for the fun of it. So let's say I pick something like this. I can right click and save that um, material. So I'm going to save that picture as and put it somewhere on my computer for now. I'll put it under the temp folder and I'll call it insulation. And it's saved right now as a JPEG. So you can go back into here into Revit and click where it says that text that says no image and go browse to that file. Now that it's there, you can tweak it really if you need to. You can double click it um, and get into the, the uh, material editor, text texture editor, and work with all of this if you need to. I'm not going to worry about it for now. You guys get the point. Click OK. That material is created. There's the insulation. Set it to whatever thickness you want. This time I'll do it as uh, 6 inches just to be really fat so you can see the difference between the, the insulation methods and also the panels. Now that I've created that wall type, Again, I can either go in and select the entire storefront, go to the type properties, and go in here and switch this to the one that I just made. Um, or, so for example, if I head over up here and look for that wall type that I created, insulation method 2. There. If we do this and hit apply and OK, all of them will change except for the one that was changed earlier because we unlocked that. And if I control Z to undo this, I can also just um, zoom in a little bit <clears throat> and then tab into just the one panel that I want, unpin it, and do the same thing here, swap it out for the one that I want insulation method to. Now because this is a wall, you can take a door, any kind of door, for example, a single flush, and put it in that wall. So let's go over to the north elevation. It's easier to see and easier to place. 
and if I go to door and I use the single flush you see because it the cursor is touching the wall it knows it's a wall and it allows me to place it so I'm going to click to place it and it's kind of strange that you can do that but that's how doors are in Revit they are wall hosted so as long as they see a wall you can place it in there so if you need to do something weird like this you can but I wouldn't advise it just because of the design nature of what you're trying to do and that's the video on how to switch out a curtain wall panel to something other than the default panel. Thank you very much for watching.